Hello folks, Johnny Mitchell here from Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse in the big city of U Harley, Georgia. Uh, we're here today with Barbecue TV and we're going to show you some fine recipes. We're also Johnny Mitchell's Smokehouse Championship Cook Team. You'll see us out there on the circuit every once in a while. And every once in a while we sneak up and, uh, and come in uh, close to the first place sometimes. So we appreciate it. Have a good time with it. But here in the kitchen we're going to show you some things that you can add to barbecues, uh, have before barbecues. Or, or just eat all day long. So we're going to start off with yeah, tailgating. You know, you can't beat it. You know, you, you're going to tailgate, you're going to cook out. We're going to start off some great potato salad. And we start out with red potatoes. The skins are very soft on these and it's very nice. We cut them into bite-sized chunks, always remember that, and try to keep them as uniform as possible. That helps the cooking process. We're doing five pounds, so this will feed about 30, 40 people. Also, remember it takes about 30 minutes for these to cook and you want to completely cool before you start making your, your dressing and everything so it'll, it'll incorporate very nicely and it'll chill down a lot quicker. So, we're going to start out. We got two cups of celery. Dice fairly fine. Two cups of onion. I've got a little bit of white onion and I've also got a little bit of purple onion here. It really doesn't matter. You can use all one or the other. Pickle relished or very minced dill pickle. You can do that on your own. Just buy some nice big kosher dills. I like the brine pickles better than I do the uh, vinegar pickles for this application. Two heaping tablespoons of dill weed. Two tablespoons of tarragon. Now this tarragon is going to give it a light back note. It's going to be really nice. We have dry mustard. We also have prepared yellow mustard. We're going to put about, oh, about a quarter cup in there. And just kind of eyeball it. One cup of Italian dressing. Julia, if you're looking at refrigerator over and get me the mayonnaise, it's just already put portion out in a bowl. We're going to add a little bit of salt. You got to remember on your salt, depending on your Italian dressing, if you don't make your own, it has a lot of sodium in it. So taste, don't, put, don't put too much. You can always add more later. We have granulated garlic. And we also have some black pepper. Thank you. You're welcome. Here with the mayonnaise, we got about, oh, four to five cups of mayo. And we're going to incorporate this together. Use a spoon, use a whisk, whatever works for you. We're going to mix this thoroughly. If you add everything on top of the potatoes, especially your spices, it's very likely you're going to get lumps. And then somebody's going to bite into a big old little chunk of pepper. We're going to smooth this all the way around on top. Invest in a rubber spatula like this because it really helps get all the product out. No sense in washing it down the drain. You can make variations of this potato salad. A lot of times at home we'll put uh, Kalamata olives or black olives, green olives, boiled egg, do anything you like. Make it yours, but this is a great, great recipe right here. This is what we serve in the smokehouse. There's a lot of things that we're going to show you on this virtual cookbook of exactly what we do in the restaurant. There's going to be a lot of recipes that we do for you that's not at the restaurant, but I guarantee you they'll all be good. When it's all incorporated like this, cover it, put it in a Tupperware container, whatever you're going to tote it in so you don't have to transfer it again. Refrigerate it. This can be done several days ahead. If you want to kick it up, put a little paprika on top or whatever right at the last minute, and that's our potato salad.
Hi folks, Johnny Mitchell back here. Now we're going to do some wings. Great appetizer. You can cook these ahead of time for a, for a tailgate party, going outside as appetizers for your guests, or just sitting down in front of a ball game and having a good time with a few cold beers. So we're going to start off with a spiced ridge. So what we've done, we've got about eight cups of all-purpose flour. You know, flour don't come pre-seasoned, so always season your flour. It can be as simple as salt and pepper, but we're going to do salt, black pepper. These are about quarter cups. Granulated garlic and a Spanish paprika. For this application, we have to use a Spanish paprika. I do love and enjoy uh, Hungarian paprikas, but they're a little bit stronger, and I like those in other, uh, other dishes. So what we're going to do is just going to mix this together. Glove up if you need to and mix it by hand. And remember, you don't have to use all this. Use what you need, and then this, this can be used for, for down the road. It keeps indefinitely. You can put it in a plastic bag uh, in a dry place, and it's going to keep indefinitely for you. Now, I am going to glove up here because we're about to handle some raw chicken. Let me grab some glove. All right, so we've got our spiced reg made. We've got some jumbo chicken wings. Sometimes they're called number twos or jumbos. Uh, you can get these from most wholesale places. Uh, ask a market order them for you. Usually you get kind of a party wing that's a little bit smaller in the grocery store. We do bring these in by the case because we go through cases and cases. And we also um, have them pre-cut for us. Now we're going to later on in the series, we'll show you how to break down a chicken and actually how to cut up a chicken wing. But it's just as easy to buy them you know, pre-done like this. So we take them. Just drop them down in our dredge. Again, you could pour flour over the top of that if you wanted to, but I like to put them in here and just toss them. You want them covered completely. You gotta remember that flour does break down your oil. So you only get so many uses out of this oil. So you want to shake off the extra, and I'll show you. We're going to get a little pan right here, a little sheet pan, and separate them out. I just go ahead and separate my, my drums from my flats, simply because the, the uh, drum, drum, drums are going to cook a lot uh, longer than the, the flats do. Depending on your fryer at home, you might only can cook about eight or ten of them at a time. If you got a little little fry component, or if you're doing outside on a on a turkey fryer, um, obviously in a restaurant we're doing a big deep fryer. This will help us knock off some of this flour here, and we're probably going to do about twenty to a basket. And we're actually going to show you guys a couple of recipes today for sauces. Uh, we were very fortunate. We just won the Roman Roast King of Wings. Proud to take that award home here. And we're going to show you the recipe that we won with. And we're introducing another one today. And we'll talk about the sauces in just a minute. Make sure they're all out of there. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop my baskets. Also, you see I've got this already dropped and set up here shaking a little bit of the flour off and all this excess flour instead of burning our oil stays on the sheet pan and the rest of it goes to the wings some people are going to tell you it's not necessary to cook these separate that's okay let them do it let them cook them uh, together again I don't want these dried out and these overcooked or undercooked. Again, just shake off this oil. And remember, at home, take your time. Enjoy, the, enjoy cooking. Enjoy what you do. Know your cooking method. How long is it going to take me? Now what we want to do, folks, is we want to get this 
flour is starting to stick. If we start shaking these baskets around too quick, that flour is going to come off. So as this cooks for a couple of minutes, we're going to slowly separate them so they don't stick together. It's going to be a nice technique. And as they cook, we're going to shake them. This is going to take about, when they, using these jumbo wings and a deep fry about 350 degrees with canola oil, this is going to take about 15 minutes for this wing. We're going to do a double cook on these. We're actually going to cook them, let them cool down, and cook them again. That gives a nice crispy skin, and that's going to allow that sauce that we put them in to do adhere to it and stick to it. All right, so while those are cooking, we'll start making some sauces. All right, folks, what we're doing now is we're going to do the wings that we won the king of wings with in Rome. We're going to start out, we've already pre-melted some butter. And now let's do about a half a cup or so. We're starting to get it warm a little bit. We have minced garlic. We buy whole garlic and then we take and we mince it down. We're going to do about a quarter cup. On these sauces you can do ahead of time and use them all that day. Or take and use what you need and then take the rest of it and put it in the refrigerator for another time. This is good for several weeks in the refrigerator. When you're cooking with garlic, garlic, onions, things of that nature has a lot of sugar in it and will burn and become pungent. So what we want to do is saute the garlic through till it's cooked, but we also don't want to burn it. I'm starting to uh, fry up a little bit, saute up. I'm going to turn our heat down just a little bit on this. This is a garlic butter buffalo sauce. Now, buffalo sauce, the standard typical buffalo sauce is a um, cayenne style pepper that's been incorporated with margarine or some type of liquid uh, oil. They originated from Buffalo, New York. That's the reason they get that name. And a lady had a restaurant up there and her son brought in a bunch of their college buddies, a bunch of hungry football players one evening and they about sold out. Back in those days, people discarded the wings. The wings and the tips got either thrown away or restaurants making use of everything made a stock out of it, made chicken stock. But to feed these guys, she took some margarine, melted it down, took a bunch of hot sauce and threw in with it, and then started frying these wings. Now they didn't do a, uh, my understanding, they didn't do a, a battered uh, like we did with our, our dredge. She just flat fried them. If you go into a restaurant, that's typically called naked if you don't want a dredge on them. I like the dredge. It adds uh, texture to the wing, makes them crispier, holds the sauce on more. Plus, you get all those spices and stuff in there. We're getting close there. I'm shaking her wings around. Alright, just about ready. Again, you don't want to overcook that garlic. So then we're going to take our, we got about, oh, a half a cup to a cup, actually it's close to a cup of buffalo sauce. Now what we've done here is we had some wings cooked before, like do a double fry. You're going to cook these wings, let them cool down, and then recook them. You want to bring the temperature back up to 165 minimum. 165 will kill all the bacteria or anything that's in chicken. So that's what we want to do. You just toss them around in there, get them nice and covered. You can reduce this down if you want it thicker, but I tell you what, this is a really nice wing right here. You want that garlic nice and coated on all of them. If you want it hotter, reduce it down more. If you want it milder, add a little bit more margarine to it. That's the difference typically with a buffalo wing sauce. If it's made by hand in a restaurant, that's what they do. They add a little bit of margarine to cut it or they cook it down. See how that's still seaming and everything in there? Let it soak in there. Grab our plate. Turn the fire off. You'll get an order of 10 here in the restaurant. 
or 20. Comes in multiples of 10, but I don't care. I'll do them for you any way you want and serve as many you want. I think we got 11 or 12 on that plate. My favorite dipping sauce is a blue cheese. Our, our ranch and everything's homemade here too. But right there, folks, that is a beautiful, delicious wing. And that's what took his first prize. All right, Johnny Mitchell back here, folks. Appreciate you coming in, checking our wings out today. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our sweet Georgia Brown. Now this has a super lot of ingredients to it and can be a little complicated, but it's not that hard either. So if you like to cook, you're going to really love these wings. You don't need a dipping sauce for these because the sauce is going to be so thick, it's going to be a fruit sauce. A chutney is what we're doing and we're doing a peach chutney. Most chutneys start out with apples and then you have mango chutney, peach chutney, and we're going to have a peach chutney here in the restaurant. And we're going to actually soak our wings in this and serve them up on the plate. So what we're going to do is start off with two cups of diced peaches. So we've taken fresh peaches, you peel them, free stones, you can pop the pit out. If not, cut them off the pit. Dice them fairly fine. Apple, one cup of apple. Granulated white sugar. This is about two cups. One cup of purple onion diced. We've got it minced fairly fine because we it's going to cook down in this recipe, but we want to make it cook cook on down pretty quickly here. Half a cup of cider vinegar. You can use white vinegars. I decided since we've got the apples and stuff in here and we're in the south anyway, we're going to use some apple cider vinegar. About a teaspoon of ginger. You can use some fresh ginger and shave it down. But I decided to go ahead and just use this in my recipe, use some uh, dried ginger. Alright, we have all kinds of beautiful things here. We have curry. Now that's something you don't see much, but you will find it in a lot of ch uh, chutneys. Curries are very different, so you need to find out which curry powder that you like best. You can make them from scratch, but we buy a, a really nice curry powder. We have our smokehouse rub. Uh, we use this on our meats and everything here in the restaurant, but we also add it to soups and stews and different things. A chutney is a fruit based and sweet, but it's uh, very spicy. It's, it's very savory. So we got a couple of tablespoons of our, our uh, rub in that. We have a little allspice, about a half a teaspoon. Remember, things like allspice go a long way, so we have to be careful how much we use. Let's go with a nice back note to that. It's going to be very delicious. We also have a little cinnamon. We're going to take this over the stove and start the cooking process. Start out with a hot fire on your pot. Go ahead and mix these together until your spices are incorporated, your sugar and your spices are dissolved. Once all this is dissolved together, and just as you start up to a boil, we want to bring it down to a simmer. So we've been cooking this for about 20-25 minutes. As you can see how dark and beautiful this has got. You don't want to scorch it, don't want to burn it. So just keep cooking it on a simmer, bringing it down. That fruit starts breaking down. Okay, now we've got a beautiful chutney. Remember, chutneys are spicy, they're savory, wonderful with sweet and tangy sometimes. We love doing this. It's a lot of fun. Also, uh, we're going to take now and incorporate the rest of this into our dish for our wings. We're not done yet, so it is a little complicated, but it's a lot of fun to do this at home. And you know what? Come to the smokehouse. We'll serve them here too. You don't have to worry about it. Quarter cup of hot sauce. Now, when I say hot sauce, I mean the cayenne-based sauce, Tabasco's, um, cayennes, whatever pepper you want. So we take that and use any brand you want. 
you know, there's hotter brands out there, so if you want it a little hotter, then use the hotter brands. We're going to take brown sugar. We're going to add about a half a pound of brown sugar in there. We're also going to add a mustard style barbecue sauce. We happen to make this one in the restaurant. And we're going to add about four cups. A mustard style sauce can be as simple as a yellow mustard and vinegar. I've seen a lot of people do that. I've also seen some that add honey to it. Ours is a fairly complex recipe here. We add a lot of spice to it and we make it and we also have a little bit of our original sauce we add to a different sauces, especially this mustard sauce. So we're going to incorporate that. Bring the heat back up just a little bit because right now what we want to do is melt that brown sugar we put in there. Didn't take too long to do this, you just want to incorporate it together and again dissolve that sugar. All right, we're going to take, take us about, let's do 10 again. Two, four, six, let's do 12. Two, four, six. We let our wings come down, we're going to bring that back up to 10. By the time they come back up to 10, remember 165 on your wings, this sauce is going to be ready. So we'll have you some good wings in just a moment. Okay. All right, we're ready to assemble these wings. These are our sweet Georgia Browns. So we've probably got 30 ingredients all totaled in here, but believe me, it's a lot of fun and it's really worth it. If you can see, it really hasn't taken that long once you get your chutney made. Chutney can be made weeks ahead. You can put that in the refrigerator and pull it out as you want it. You make this sauce, add, this, add the barbecue sauce and stuff to it, and it'll be fine. So we're gonna ladle some of this on. We'll start out with about a cup. You got a tangy, spicy, sweet, savory, a little bit of hot. Lost one up there. Julia, hand me a plate, please, dear. I don't know if I'd serve these with vegetables or not. You'd have to take your set. Yeah, these, these are going to be great just like they are. We're going to rake that out on there. I guarantee you're going to be wanting to lick your fingers on this one. I personally wouldn't want a sauce with this. You could garnish it with a peach, garnish it with a slice of apple if you wanted to do something of that nature. Put a little bit more of the, uh, the uh, chutney on the side. Make a coolie, which is just the fruit without the spices, and cook it down and have it with a coolie if you wanted to. That'd be a nice way to do it. So these are our beautiful, brand new, introducing today, Sweet Georgia Brown Wings. Hello folks, Johnny Mitchell here with Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse. We're back in the kitchen fixing you some great, great food today. Uh, we're going to start off with a mole sauce for our chicken ole. Uh, very nice Central American dish, very deep and complex uh, sauce, but it's worth the try. And if it's too hard for you, then you know where to get it. Just come on down and, and eat with us. Uh, so right now we're going to start off with our dry spices. We're going to take some Italian seasoning, which has got oregano and basil and a few other things in it. We have cumin, chili powder, cinnamon, used quite a bit in Central and South American dishes, cocoa. Remember, cocoa is just not for baking. It is actually used as a savory spice and adds a lot of deep complex flavors, very earthy and great flavors in that. All right, we're going to start with this and we're going to start on the stove doing a uh, uh, dry toast on this. We want to start getting these almost to a smoke point. 
Once that happens, then we'll add some more ingredients and we'll finish off our sauce in here just a little bit. All right, so let's go over to the stove. We're going to incorporate all this together. Go ahead and set the rest of my spices and things over here. As this starts, we're going to go ahead and add three tablespoons of our spice mixture. If you've seen the episode before where we actually did a dredge, this is what this is. It's a flour, all-purpose flour with salt, pepper, uh, granulated garlic, and paprika. This is going to act as a thickener and also with the flavor of the spices. You want to incorporate all of it together. You got your heat on high. I wish you could smell these flavors in here. They're just, just tremendous. We want to keep it moving to kind of make sure everything's toasted evenly. This is going to get pretty hot. As we get this toasted together, you can start seeing a little smoke coming off of it. We can turn this down just a little bit. We're going to add a quarter cup of olive oil. You can use a canola oil if you want, but I, I like the olive oil in here better. You're going to notice how, how dark this is going to get here just very quickly. We've got about three tablespoons of granulated garlic and a half a cup of really nice fin, fine minced onion. Incorporate it together. It's going to start coming together like a paste. See how dark it's getting once you add the olive oil to it. We're going to get this nice and toasted in here. You smell those onions and that garlic already. As this starts to cook a little bit, we have four and a half cups of homemade chicken stock. And we're going to add it just a little bit at a time. All that spices and flour is just going to dissolve in here like a paste. As it starts to incorporate, add a little bit more. Adding it a little bit at a time actually gives you an opportunity to kind of work out any lumps and everything that's in here. We want the onion to still cook with the heat of the pan and not boil. The sugars will intensify in that onion and that garlic when that heat hits it. If you put it in a straight liquid and boil it, it becomes, the texture becomes bad um, or very soft to me. When I say bad, it's just my personal uh, flavor profile I don't care for. But like this, it just breaks down nice evenly. See how nice and thick that is? We'll go ahead and add the rest of our chicken stock. You want this sauce fairly thick. And what we're going to do is we're just going to let it simmer, simmer on down. So this is probably going to reduce almost by half. 
So we're going to turn that down. We're going to steer it every once in a while. As we're waiting on the sock, uh, stock to reduce down and our salt mole sauce to, to come, come together, we're going to make some Johnny Cakes. Now Johnny Cakes is just a griddle cake with the cornbread. It's basically a cornbread mixture that's cooked on the flat top. We add a little bit of bacon grease to it and I'll show you how we're going to assemble that. All right, very simply, it's a simple cornbread mixture that we use. We don't use sugar in ours. I don't, I don't care for sugar in my cornbread. Uh, so we start off with the uh, all-purpose um, cornmeal mix. And remember, cornmeal and corn flour are two different things. So you want to do a meal to make your cornbread. We've got a cup of our spice rub, or our, our uh, dredge over there that we put in here. For ours, we use bacon grease. You can use oil. You can use a vegetable oil, uh, anything that's got a little bit higher temp to it. We also add two eggs because we want a nice, almost pancake type. Beat that up, pour that in there. Nice buttermilk. We're going to probably start out with about a cup. It's about three quarters of a cup right there. We'll see how much more we need to add here. What I'm looking for is just a nice batter type consistency. Incorporate everything together. That's pretty good. This could be a nice batter right there. All right, we'll go over to our flat top and cook us some, some uh, Johnny Cakes. Yep. All right, so we're over to our flat top. Ours stays very, very well seasoned. We're going to put a little bit of uh, margarine down here on it. And we use about a half a cup. In the restaurant, you get three of these to an order. And it cooks just like a pancake, pretty much. We're going to let that not get nice and start coming up and, uh, and, and cooked, and then we'll flip it over here in just a moment. It'll be about two minutes. Ready? All right, so getting it on that side, always take your spatula and just come up under them, and they'll start getting free loose like that. Then it's time to flip. They won't come up, they don't puff up like a, a, a pancake with the bubbles, so don't get uh, to let that fool you. These are really nice. It's gonna go really good with this chicken ole we're doing today. So we made that black mole sauce. We're going to be grilling some chicken tenderloins here in just a minute. Um, and then this will be going good with that. Okay. All right, so we've got these done. A couple of minutes on each side is all it really takes. And in the south, they're called Johnny Cakes. So you're Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse and you get Johnny Cakes. All right, so we're going to set that to the side right here. We're going to take, and we've got chicken tenderloins. Okay, now a tenderloin comes from underneath the breast. It is completely different. It's a white meat, the white part of the chicken, but it's a separate muscle. And when you cut into a chicken, I'll show you in a minute, we're actually going to cut some up. I'll show you where that piece comes from. And chicken tenders and cut breast is completely different. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of our rub and put on here. We're actually going to turn it, use the oven, uncontaminated hand, put a rub on there, and we're going to put it on our char grill. All right, we'll let that cook a couple of minutes. We'll show you in a minute just before we flip it how it's almost going to get completely done before you turn it. If you try to turn meat on the grill too soon, it's going to stick. So you always have to be careful about that. 
All right, now you're ready. All right, folks, we're almost done right here. So we've got our, our chicken tender, see how it's coming up white almost all the way through. We're gonna finish off our sauce. I'm gonna show you a little trick on that. Um, it, again, it is almost done. Just go slow with it. No sense in rushing. Beautiful. Flip that back over. And without any oil, you know, you barely had any stick right there. All right, so as that's finishing, don't want to overcook it. We're going to add provolone cheese to it. Back right here is that uh, cooking there. We're gonna put a little dome on it and that's just gonna hold it in there. It'll melt on its own. I'm just speeding the process up just a little bit. All right, you can keep reducing this down, but this is a nice little trick you can do at home. Cornstarch, as long as you don't overdo it, can go a long way. And if you get a, 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 a cornstarch that's seasoned, we just add a little bit of powder to this. Now granulated uh, uh, garlic will actually have bits in it. So we add a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of granulated or uh, powdered garlic into this with some cornstarch. All right. Typically, you'd want to wet that and make a slur. But in this process, if you'll just spread it very thin, and you got to remember, nothing will reach its full thickening ability until it boils. So we're going to incorporate that in. So this comes up to a boil. Take just a second here. How much thicker that's getting now, folks? Bubbles are starting up. We'll let it start coming up to medium to a rapid boil. And you see how much thicker that is now. It's starting to get a lot thick. And again, for this application, you want it fairly thick. All right, we're going to kill the heat on that. So what we're going to do now is we'll start to assemble our plate. Our beautiful grilled chicken. I'm just going to set this to the side for just a second here. I'm going to take a little bit of, give me a ladle. Very intense flavor here. So we're going to put a little bit of the sauce on the bottom of the plate. Lay that on there. We're going to serve this with a black bean queso dip. and some of our stone ground grits, our smokehouse grits. Very beautiful earthy flavors. We're going to top it off. A little pico de gallo. And that's our chicken olay that you get here at our restaurant. This is exactly how it comes. If you want to set another side with it, you're welcome to add anything, but I really suggest you try these flavor profiles together. Really delicious and wonderful. Chicken. Hi folks, back in the kitchen, Johnny Mitchell here at the Smokehouse. I promised you we'd show you how to do a chicken from scratch. Uh, my mother never ever bought cut up chicken. 
Uh, a lot of times back in the day, you couldn't find cut up chicken unless you had the butcher do it for you. So we're buying, we got a whole bird right here. We're about three, three and a half pounds on this bird. We're gonna break it all the way down and then I'll show you how to do from your wings and uh, if you want to keep them separate and save them for later. Uh, if you want to do fried chicken, if you want to do roasted chicken, we're actually just gonna put a rub on it today and roast it. All right, so what I like to do is start out with my, my leg quarters and you do want it kind of cool, you know, not, not frozen at all, but you're gonna slice down through here and you're gonna find that joint bone right there. When you find that bone and pop it, then you're gonna bring that, th uh, that quarter out, okay? All right, from here, we're gonna come down, thigh, leg. You're gonna find that joint, and you kinda come back at an angle toward that leg. All right, so now I've got me a beautiful leg, a beautiful thigh. We're gonna do the other side. Cut that skin, bring it all the way down. Find that joint. And cut it back toward the back. Remember, the skin's got a lot of flavor. If you don't like skin, pull it off. Pull back again toward that leg, that toward that drumstick. Now we've got four pieces of chicken. All right, your wings up here, the whole wing. Pull it up where you can work at it from the back side. Break that joint, come down toward the breast and get just a little piece of that breast meat. Okay, I'm gonna set my bird out of the way for just a second. You'll see wings packed together like this in the grocery store, all tightened up. You pull them out, you got the whole wing section. We're gonna separate them just like we're gonna do a hot wing, buffalo wing, find that joint, come back and just cut it down through there. On your tip, the joint's kind of double jointed right here on both sides. You're gonna find that, you gotta break that. Save your pieces for stock. You take, a, you take a cook a bird, you pull the meat off the bone, have these in the refrigerator, the freezer, thaw them out, throw them all in a pot, add some salt, and you've got chicken stock. Reduce it down and more flavorful to get. So there's your flat, your drumette. Again, save those. All right, now my mother always cooked the back. So right where we took those thighs off is the back side of that chicken, okay? So we're just gonna release the rest of this skin, trim it up a little bit, save that for stock. All right, I'm gonna pull this on down and we're gonna kinda of break it off that rib cage right there. We're gonna pull those ribs and everything out off those breasts. So right there where those rib bones are at and that backbone starts, we're gonna take and cut that off, stock. You can throw this backbone in there if you want to, but I tell you what, as a kid, I'd go for that first. There's two pieces of meat in there called the oyster. It's not a real oyster, it's a fine piece of meat. It's on both sides right here. And the chef's delight. Usually it never makes it out of the kitchen. The chef always eats them. So that's the back. Now, we could cut the wishbone out here. Just come down past the bone and then cut it out and you got a wishbone cut. I'm not gonna do that today. We're just gonna go ahead and slice it right down the middle. Break that bone, slice it through. Now look right here. This is the tenderloin I was talking about. See that separate muscle right there? When you get chicken tenders, 
that's what it should be. And we're gonna save that and actually add it to our others over there because we got quite a few of them and we'll fry that up as a chicken tender. All right, we've got a breast there, piece of breast here. Because they're so large, this is quite a large bird, we're actually gonna break these bones down. We're gonna have to cut across and break that, and cut it. This is gonna help this bird cook more evenly. All right, we're gonna get us a sheet pan here. We'll just do it on this one. We're actually going to use a little cooking spray. You could put a little oil on here. But a high temp cooking spray is great for the grill. Now again, I've got one hand contaminated and one not. So the one that's not will go into the rub. Alright, we're just going to literally rub everything down. Do both sides. It's in your rub. This is our secret smokehouse rub, so I can't tell you what's all in it, but I will give you a hint. Um, there's salt, pepper, and paprika in it. From there, folks, what seasonings do you like? What do you think's good in a rub? Different applications might use different different things. We actually we use this on almost all our meats here at the restaurant, unless we're doing something special. These little wing tips will cook about the same time. It's some of these big ones, believe it or not, because we're going to keep them close together right there. Our back. That's our stock parts. Okay, we're going to throw this in the oven. We're going to cook it 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes in a convection oven. You might need another five or ten minutes in a regular oven. All right, folks, we're back. Our chicken has been cooked. What I like to do is always stick a thermometer in it. Remember, we're looking at a minimum of 165. You got to hold a 165 temp for 15 seconds or more to, to make sure that you kill all the bacteria. We spread this chicken out. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at those nice juices. We can make a gravy with that if we wanted to. Another good thing about uh, this chicken, you can grill it, put it on your smoker, uh, fry it. You know, we could have easily made that to that dredge, put it in some buttermilk and soak it, and fried it up. Be beautiful and delicious. Uh, the bigger pieces, if you're going to fry it, you may want to take them and pop them in the oven once your crust gets done to make sure the internal temp is done right because in a fryer, your little pieces will cook a lot quicker. So we have a nice roasted chicken.